Hello friends, most welcome to another video tutorial of Zoological Society of Assam. Myself, Dr. Ravindra Hazurika, Assistant Professor, PG Department of Zoology, Dorongkola Stage for Assam. In today's lecture, let me try to explain about an important neurohormone in insect that is Barsicone, commonly called as insect cuticle hardening hormone, its chemical nature and function. Learning outcome. The specific objectives of this tutorial are to develop our insight into the nature and functions of Barsicon. Two important physiological events in insects are under the influence of the neurohormone Barsicon, cuticle tanning, and wing expansion. We will try to understand the detailed chemical events of the cuticle tanning process, which include currently accepted model of cuticular sclerotization process as given by Anderson in 2005, about the sclerotization precursors such as N-acyl dopamine and N-B-analine dopamine. Here N stands for nitrogen atom. When nitrogen atom combines with acyl group, it is called acylation. At the same time, we will be able to know about the cuticular enzymes. Different enzymes are involved in cuticular sclerotization process. Before going to the detail about the function of Barsicon, let me answer the question, what is Barsicon? The term Barsicon is derived from the Greek word Barsicos pertaining to tanning. According to current knowledge, Barsicone is the neurohormone that is released after the completion of ecdysis, setting of old skin, and triggers the tanning process, sclerotization and melanization of the new cuticle as well as wing expansion. Cuticular exoskeleton, molting, and the neurohormone Barsicone in insects. Functional background. We know that insects comprise more than 90% of all animal species on earth and are of great economic and ecological importance. The evolutionary success of insects is due partially to their semi-rigid exoskeleton, also known as the cuticle, which provides protection, mechanical support, and an effective barrier to desiccation and infection. On the other hand, it limits insect growth. Insects must set their old exoskeleton periodically, that is called the molting, to allow growth and metamorphosis. So during the molting process, a new cuticle is synthesized and secreted by underlying epidermal cells which is usually soft, flexible, and lacks physical strength for protection, and then is hardened after the remains of the old cuticle are set at its disease. So insects could not survive without properly hardened cuticle. So tanning of the cuticle must occur in a relatively short period of time after its mold for the new exoskeleton to be functional or for protection. So the tanning process is under the influence of hormone Barsicon, while the molting process is mainly controlled by the hormone 20 hydroxy ecdysone or simply the ecdysone or the ecdysteroids. Nature of Barsicon. Functional Barsicon is a heterodimer consisting of two cysteine not subunits referred to as Barsicon or Bars or Barsicon Alpha and partner of Barsicon that is called P Bars or Barsicon Beta as indicated by Mendiv et al. in 2005. Bars and P Bars are encoded by two individual genes. CG134194 bars and CG1528284 for P bars. 
cystin not protein is a class of vertebrate signal proteins containing consensus framework of cystin knots produced by disulfide bones. So both bars and p bars belongs to the class of cystin knot protein. Localization of barsicon. Barsicon activity has been demonstrated in almost all parts of the central nervous system of insects, including brain, corpora cardiaca, and corpora elata complex, and thoracic and abdominal ganglia, depending upon the insect species analyzed. Now we will come to the main important point that is the function of barsicon. So, as I have mentioned, that two important functions performed by barsicon that is cuticle tanning and wing expansion. So we will mainly concentrate on the role of barsicon in tanning of cuticle or role of barsicon in hardening and tanning of cuticle. So cuticle tanning process. So cuticle in insects is typically divided into relatively hard and stiff regions that is the sclerites separated by more flexible and pliable regions the arthroidal membrane which make the various forms of locomotion possible in insects cuticular sclerotization is a chemical process whereby certain regions of the insect cuticle are transformed irreversibly from a flexible material into a stiffer and harder structure Characterized by decreased deformability, decreased extractability of the matrix proteins, and increased resistance towards enzymatic degradation. So, I want to mention again the important functions of the cuticle in insects. So, decreased deformability, decreased extractability of the matrix proteins and increased resistance towards the enzymatic degradation. These are the very important point in relation to function of exoskeleton in case of insects. During sclerotization, the color of the cuticle may change from nearly colorless over various brown and black sets to the completely black. So one important point to be noted here that the term tanning is often used synonymously with sclerotization, but sometimes it is specifically used for the process resulting in the resulting in light brown that is called the tan cuticles, as indicated by Anderson in 2005. Now you come to the cuticle training processes. Two separate processes are involved in cuticle training that I have already mentioned about it. Those are the sclerotization and melanization. Before occlusion, the newly formed insect cuticle consists of a thin layer of hydrophobic waxy chitin-free epicuticle and a thick layer of protein and chitin-rich procuticle. At occlusion, the outer portion of the procuticle is quickly cross-linked by tanning agents N-acetyl dopamine and N-B-alanyl dopamine to form a layer of hardened exocuticle and the inner portion of the procuticle remains uncross-linked to form endocuticle. The current model of cuticular sclerotization and melanization. The currently accepted sclerotization model can be shown in two steps. That is, biosynthesis of the sclerotization precursors NADA and NBAD from tyrosine, followed by cuticular oxidation of NADA and NBAD to various sclerotization agents. Now we come to the various chemical events or the chemical reactions that takes place during the process of biosynthesis of NADA and NBAD from tyrosine. 
So here all the chemical reactions are shown and you see in the first step of the chemical reactions the amino acid tyrosine is converted into 3,4-dihydroxyphenylalanine or simply called as the DOPA and this conversion is carried out by the enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase. Like once again, I want to mention that tyrosine hydroxylase hydroxylates the amino acid tyrosine into, into 3 4 dihydroxyphenylalanine. So, this is the first chemical reaction that takes place during the process of biosynthesis of NADA and NBAD. So, this DUPA is converted into dopamine. This, that is the next step. DUPA is decarboxylated to dopamine by the enzyme DUPA decarboxylase. So, this 3,4-dihydroxyphenylalanine, that is the DUPA, is decarboxylase uh, under the influence of enzyme DUPA decarboxylase and that DUPA decarboxylase converts 3,4-dihydroxyphenylalanine into dopamine. So, first step is that conversion of tyrosine into DUPA. Second step, DUPA into dopamine. Here in the first step, that is hydroxylation takes place, tyrosine hydroxylase enzyme is involved. And in the second step, here the DUPA decarboxylase enzyme is involved. So this dopamine can be enzymatically acylated, as I mentioned earlier, N acylation. This dopamine enzymatically acylated to either N acetyl dopamine, N acetyl dopamine, or NB alanyl dopamine. So, this dopamine can be converted into NADA or NBAD. Two reactions may take place. Or the surplus dopamine, this surplus dopamine can be used for melanin synthesis, that is the melanization process. So, once again, I, for your clearance, I want to explain the chemical reactions which are very simple here. Tyrosine, conversion of tyrosine into DUPA in the first step which is under the action of hormone, tyro, horm, not hormone, under the action of her enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase. DUPA is converted into dopamine that is decarboxylation takes place by the enzyme DUPA decarboxylase and finally this dopamine is converted into N-acetyl dopamine or N-B-alanyl dopamine. So that dopamine is the main important component of sclerotization process. Surplus dopamine can be used for melanin synthesis. Here once again, the synthesis of NADA and NBAD from amino acid tyrosine under the influence of different enzymes are shown. In the second step of sclerotization process, cuticular oxidation of NADA and NBAD to various sclerotization agents takes place. As shown here in the chemical formula or the chemical reactions and in the flowchart, acyl dopamines that may be NADA or NBAD is firstly oxidized to O-quinones 
This opinions react with nucleophilic compounds where it is shown as HX, HX here, resulting in the form, formation of ring substituted adducts. And these uquinones is also isomerized to form p quinone methyls. These p quinone methyls also react with nucleophilic compounds, resulting in the formation of side chain substituted adducts. So, what is meant by adducts? An adducts is a product of a direct addition of two or more distinct molecules, resulting in a single reaction product containing all atoms of all components. The resultant is considered a distinct molecular species. Here HX may be hydrogen chloride, hydrogen bromide or hydrogen iodide. So these resultant p quinones is isomerized to form dehydroacyl dopamines and these dehydroacyl dopamines oxidized to form quinones. Here it is the 9 and 10. This quinones is converted into dihydroxyphenyl dihydroxybenzodioxine derivatives in presence of catechols. So these are the important chemicals of sclerotization process or, the, or these are the main sclerotization agents which are formed under the influence of different types of enzymes. The sclerotization process can be simply summarized into following four points only. Firstly, the tyrosine is hydroxylated to DOPA by tyrosine hydroxylase. DOPA is decarboxylated to dopamine by DOPA decarboxylase. Dopamine is N-acylated to NADA and NBAD by dopamine and acetyl transferase. NADA and NBAD are enzymatically oxidized and cross-linked with different nucleophilic protein residues. Here it is shown as HX and chitin. As a result, the cuticle becomes hardened and more hydrophobic. Cuticles sclerotized exclusively by NADA are colorless or light colored and cuticle sclerotized with increased contribution of NBAD produce the darker colored cuticle. As I mentioned earlier, cuticular tanning process involves both sclerotization and melanization. For cuticle melanization, dopamine is also converted to insoluble melanin in presence of 5,6-dihydroxyindole as shown in the first step of sclerotization process. Melanin can be linked to granular proteins or may be distributed throughout the cuticular matrix giving the cuticle a dark color. Melanin probably also forms bones with cuticular proteins contributing to cuticular strength. So in sclerotization and melan melanization process, dopamine is the central molecule for both the processes. Here once again I want to show a flowchart the whole process that is sclerotization and melanization very simply that is why it is indicated as, uh, indicated as simplified model of cuticular sclerotization. 
So firstly, the amino acid tyrosine is hydroxylated to 3,4-dihydroxyphenyl alanine, which is also known as the DUPA. And DUPA is decarboxylated into dopamine. An acylation of dopamine resulting in the formation of NADA and NBAD. Oxidation of NADA and NBAD results in the formation of quinones and quinone derivatives. And finally, quinones react with cuticle protein side chains resulting in the cross-linking of protein. As we observed, the cuticle training process uses several enzymes to mediate the metabolic process. These include but are not limited to diphenyl oxidases, lacases, peroxidase, tyrosine hydroxylase, dopa decarboxylase, and N acetyl transferase. In the red floor beetle, trivolium castinium lacase is the only phenol oxidase whose activity is necessary for cuticle training. All these metabolic events in case of insects under the influence of the hormone barsicon. That is why barsicon is termed as the insect's cuticle training and hardening hormone. So the, another important function of barsicon in case of insect is the wing expansion. The insect wing expansion process is another physiological event occurring after ecdysis and accompanies cuticle tanning. These processes occur at the same time but the mechanism under which they are controlled and regulated are still not clear. Recent research showed that mutation in the barsicon genes causes the failure of initiation of the behavioral program for wing expansion and results in defects in wing expansion in Drosophila melanogaster. Wing development and expansion are strongly associated with programmed cell death and removal of cell debris from the wing tissue. So these are the references or suggested readings for your feedback, my email is shown here, hazarika.robindra at gmail.com. Thank you.